and law enforcement are making changes to better protect the community. Kega and I was granted a rare opportunity to sit down with newly elected Pima County Sheriff Mark Napier and Tucson Police Chief Chris Magnus for a joint interview. Nine Your Science Priscilla Casper so sat down with the sheriff and chief to discuss police accountability, community commitment, and how they plan to bring both departments together. I think the fact that he and I are sitting together right now is symbolic of something that's very new, very exciting. Pima County Sheriff Mark Napier recently elected, Tucson Police Chief Chris Magnus a little over a year on the job, both sharing their ideas for the future of law enforcement throughout their jurisdictions. TPD in recruitment mode looking for qualified candidates. Chief Magnus says Arizona is one of the few states transparent about their officers' history. There are places around the country that you know they don't even do good background checks of folks that they're hiring so someone can in fact be you know, let go or fired from one department and then some some agencies are so desperate or are willing to cut corners and will hire people without doing their due diligence. During the hiring process, the departments can look into an officer's misconduct and parameters are set to weed out unqualified applicants. Within our department, we're also allowed to set our own standards about what can disqualify somebody. So the one thing though that I would say to potential applicants is don't make an assumption about what might be disqualifying. It's really important to go through the process, talk to us. Magnus and Napier say departments around the country are looking more critically at officer training, especially when it comes to mental health. Already TPD has offered active shooter and de-escalation training and hosted the largest crisis intervention program in the country. There are many circumstances where they in fact would legitimately and legally be allowed to use force yet they are able to de-escalate a situation or get someone to cooperate with them without ever even placing hands on and so it's important that we document and celebrate some of that as well. The good part of our day and the people that I've interacted with who talk about pride of how a situation was resolved is how clever they were at de-escalating it, how yeah. clever they were at avoiding the use of force, not that you know we had this great big fight or there you know I've never met an officer who used deadly force that was happy about it. Right. Um, it is a life-changing event. It's very traumatic for the officer involved because they were in a life and death situation. Magnus says officers rely on the public as well to keep them safe. Just as the community relies on us to protect them, frankly, we rely on the community to protect us as well. It really is a two-way street. And I think this is an unusual community for a city its size to have the kind of really overwhelmingly positive relationships that exist between residents. And, and police officers. Last year, 135 officers lost their life in the line of duty. And on average, they were about 40 years old and left behind two children. So I mean, it's a community tragedy when an officer loses their life in the line of duty. And because they have uh, offered up their life to protect their fellow citizen, that's why we do the job. Um, we take an oath to put our life in jeopardy to protect someone else. So when this happens to one of us, it happens to all of us. Magnus says out of all the crime, property crime is still high. It is unacceptable, frankly. We have way too many break-ins of residences, businesses, certainly too many car busts. We've got to do better along those lines. One of the things um, that I think contributes to that is that a lot of those folks who are committing property crimes are actually people doing it to get quick money to buy drugs because they have an underlying drug addiction issue. As for the jail population, Sheriff Napier says being at capacity hurts the community. We do not benefit from having a full jail. Uh, we don't. Um, and then we need to be more guarded about who's in there and for what purposes they're in there. It costs, you know, well over $200 a day to put somebody in incarceration. Mm -hmm. If I could treat that person for $50 a day in some community-based alternative, does that make good public policy sense? Of course it does. And people say, oh, you're just, you're soft on crime, you don't want, no, 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 that's not the furthest thing from the truth. There's a difference between being aggressive and being smart. I would choose smart and let's look at long-term solutions rather than I put you in jail this week, I put you in jail next week, I put you in jail the month after that. Revolving door. Napier and Magnus say they're looking forward to combining their resources to make the community safer. Priscilla Casper, Kega 9, on your side.